I'm so glad that you are joining me today as we try to spark hope into each other. And if you are joining in today and you say, Gregory, I need some hope today. This month, I need some hope. I feel like my April was kind of crazy. I feel like I was April fooled in some way. Prayer still works. I know the adversary wants you to believe that prayer does not work, but prayer still works. Don't we believe that? Do you believe that? Prayer still works. Again, thank you for joining me today. Let's pray as we normally do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the April that you gave us, the provision that you gave us, keeping us from accidents, seen and unseen. Lord, we thank you now for our very health, our strength, for protecting our loved ones and causing our cupboards to be full. Lord, giving us wisdom and understanding. And Lord, now we ask you to fill our May with good things. Help us to learn our lessons as we follow you in Jesus' name. And every believer said, amen. I wanna read some scriptures from Ecclesiastes today uh, at the end of the ninth chapter. Words spoken softly by wise men are heeded sooner than those shouted by a Lord in folly. Wisdom is more valuable than weapons of war, but a single error destroys much value. Dead flies turn the perfumer's ointment putrid, so a little folly outweighs massive wisdom. If the wrath of the Lord flares against you, don't give up your post. For when wrath abates, grave offenses are pardoned. If the ax has become dull and he has not wetted the edge, he must exert more strength. Thus, the advantage of a skill depends on the exercise of prudence. A wise man's talk brings him favor, but a fool's lips are his undoing. His talk begins as silliness and ends as disastrous madness. Why would I read those today? I'm just reading to you the power of wisdom and exercising the wisdom. All these things that we are uh, talking about and learning in Spark of Hope, you know, we have to apply this wisdom in our lives and then it becomes active. So we want what we're going to learn today Tell the Lord, let it be active in me. Say it again, let it be active in me. We want to thank God today for um, all of our mothers, and especially to my mom. I, I'm calling my mother out, elect Lady Cynthia Newman. Happy Mother's Day to uh, my mom as she continues to um, help lead the family and help lead the church family. I want you to know, you know, I love you deeply, but I, I hope you know, uh, Mom, the deep effect you have had on so many people. You know, um, see, when people look at you, uh, they see a wise woman, and you've raised a, a great family, and there's a lot of wisdom that all of us still need to learn from you. I know that, you know, everyone, as parents begin to get older, they feel like maybe I'm not as needed as much. But mom, keep on keeping on, keep on teaching, keep on singing. Um, your love uh, has an effect on many people. And I thank God for your wisdom that has kept my life many a days and has got me to the point that I am uh, who I am. And so God bless you, God keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. And may uh, these years coming up just blow your mind with joy and happiness. All of us, take a second right now, just in your home. Of course, we're going to do it on Mother's Day. But just say, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Okay, spark of hope. Let's move into our first topic. I want to talk about... Um, the injured thumb. Don't laugh. <laughs> Do not laugh. I want to talk about the injured thumb. 
I was speaking to one of the brothers on a Saturday at church and he was sharing with me. He said, Gregory, I, I hit my thumb and my thumbnail began to turn black. And he said it was just becoming so painful that um, he actually ended up in uh, the ER. And he said to me, um, his nail bed began to turn black and blue and the pain was so great. And they had to drill a little hole in his nail bed. He said it was so painful, but it allowed the blood to be released. I wrote that down because I began to think about many things that we individually go through and they're deep. They're causing us pain. Hmm. And it's like no one but God can release this pain. This little procedure that you, you need to release this pain out of the bruise. Uh, there are some things that can't nobody help us with but Jesus. Any witnesses? And I want you today, if you're listening, and you have still some areas in your life where you are suffering trauma and things every month or every other month or once a year trigger this bruise. I want you this month to talk to the Lord about it. And I want you to allow the Lord to extract that bruise and release it. Sometimes we will, we will hide beneath food and drugs and, and alcohol and excess shopping and a bad attitude and, you know, um, being angry all the time. It's our outlet to deal with it. But these deep bruises like this brother had, unless he went to the doctor, mm, it wasn't going to get better. There are some things that we go through in life. Unless we consult the great physician, Jesus Christ, who he told us cast all our cares upon him. There are some, some things saints will never get over. But take it to Jesus. Somebody say, Gregory, it's Mother's Day uh, this month. And you say me and my mom had some unresolved issues and now she's gone the way of the grave. How can I go apologize to a grave? Well, you really can't, but you have a father in heaven. And I believe that the father can talk to your mother. <laughs> I really do believe that. But whatever it is, release it. Release your pain so that God can begin to heal you. And you too can be a witness to somebody that no matter what you're going through, God will make you whole. All right, let's move to our second topic. This is what I have written. Just let me read it. Are you accustomed to going from one worry to another worry. You know, say for instance, okay, you you have a child who wasn't hasn't been doing good in school. You've been worried about the child. Now the child is doing well. Well, now you're worried about a bill. The bill gets paid. Uh, well, now I'm going to worry about uh, my health. Now your health is fine. Okay, now I'm going to worry about my job. You know, then that seems to work out. Now I'm going to worry about this. Now I'm going to worry about that. You have to be careful of letting yourself just be in constant worry. Or you will begin to create muscle memory of worry. And you can begin to train your mind never to have peace. Because every time you have peace, your mind, muscle, memory will tell yourself, what's the next worry? What's the next thing I've got to pray and fast and do all this about? 
No. We have to learn to stop worrying and finally at some point live in this peace. You have to take your peace. There are some things that go on in life uh, unless you choose to apply hope. It'll never happen. Here's the thing, too, about when we go into worry. You have the potential of tapping into dark spirits. You don't want to begin to give place to dark spirits in your life. Those dark spirits will begin to try and even transfer to the next generation. Next thing you know, your son and daughter also seems to be a worry wart. And so, saints, I want you to, if you're doing that, I'm going from one worry to another, to another, to another, to another. Make yourself begin to stop. You say, well, how do I stop? I've had so many people ask me, how do I stop this? How do I stop that? And sometimes we'll have these great lessons and we'll go to these great teachers on how to stop. You know how to stop? After you've had an hour's class on it, stop. And until you apply, stop. You'll never begin the new muscle memory on how not to worry as much, all right? So in May, we're gonna stop worrying as much. All right, let's move on. Let's move forward. Somebody say forward. I have move that. In saying that, I'm talking about flow. How many of you have ever, uh, let's, let's go to dieting. You've been dieting and you've been doing so well. I mean, you're getting your walk on, um, your eating habits, you know, you know, you have your planned meals and you're doing well and you're seeing the scale move. And then you decide to have one cheat day. Guilty. <laughs> and that one cheat day stops the trajectory of your flow. When your life is finding a real um, alignment and flow, make sure nothing stops the flow because it can be hard to get it back. But you said, oh, Gregory, but this happened, that happened. Yeah, I've been there. I was even learning this month about flow and saints. There's some things that come in our lives. Um, unless we choose to look at it differently, it will stop the flow. Things are going to happen. But how do you look at it? Are you going to let it, though, stop the trajectory of what you're doing? If you begin to focus too much on it, it stops the flow. And next thing you know, you will find yourself taking steps back when God wants us to take steps forward. All right, what is it in your life that has come to stop your flow? See, we always think, oh, relationships. No, 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 no. You got a phone call from your mom that pissed you off. <laughs> Your sister did something to tick you off. But then it ticks you off the whole day and then next thing you know, you missed an exit. You're so angry, you're backing up your car and you hit another car because you're so preoccupied waiting to tell somebody off. They just messed up your flow. I used to know uh, someone that when people would get out of their flow, they would say, you need a hug. So you may need to remember we talked about Haven, calm down, stop tripping, let it go, move that. We are letting small things mess up our trajectory. As you are ascending, the lighter you are, the higher and faster you'll get there. Oh boy, let's move to this last thing. Remember I said last month, less structure, our sentences with the fruits of the spirit. 
uh, I don't know about you, but did anybody else have some days where like you really had to remind yourself, uh, let me structure my sentences with the fruits of the spirit? My niece, we were talking and um, somebody was saying something and we we were just like had this running, not joke, but just a little fun statement uh, as things would go on, we would say, Make sure your sentences are structured with the fruits of the spirit. And somebody said something. I don't know. Uh, let me just say it was me. I don't know it was me, uh, but I did say some things that weren't that fruitful uh, this month that I, I asked the Lord to help me with. Um, but somebody said something. And my niece, Ariana, said, well, that was an unfruitful sentence. Mm. I like the way that she changed it up. She changed it up instead of saying, make sure your sentences are structured with the fruitful, uh, with the fruits of the spirit. She said, that was an unfruitful sentence. When I heard it that way, it just struck me. How many things are we saying? Not only do we want to structure it, but, but look at what you said. Was it fruitful? Are you fruitful? Are we fruitful? I don't know about you, but I want to be fruitful. This month, I want you to continue, as I will, make sure our sentences are structured with the fruits of the Spirit. But let's go further. This month, I want you to apply two things. Make sure your sentences are, let's make sure our sentences are structured with the fruits of the Spirit and our attitude. Yeah, we're getting ready to get super saved around here. <laughs> Make sure your attitude as well is structured with the fruits of the Spirit. Now, you may have to practice the pause. Pause before judging. Pause before assuming. Pause before accusing. Pause whenever you're about to react harshly and you'll do something that um, you're going to regret. Apply the pause. When you feel your attitude beginning to go bad and it does not have the fruit of the Spirit, pause. Check it out. Before you say something awful, pause. <laughs> Check it out. But I think it's something that um, we all need to continue and on the church chat. Uh, we were doing the same thing, telling each other, hey, structure it with the fruits of the Spirit. But also with the things that we're hoping for. Speak positive about yourself. Some of you are going for a new job. Go for that new job and say, you know, like, um, with the help of the Lord, I'm going to attain that position. And if I don't, it wasn't the will of the Lord. I will move forward and I won't let that stop my trajectory, okay? So we're going to do that this month. Were you blessed by Spark of Hope today? Do you feel like you can make it? I feel like I can make it. I'm feeling hopeful. Saints, we have to apply hope. It, does, it just doesn't happen. You have to apply it. Listen, as I've been uh, working with the uh, the church and the, the new construction and you deal with delays, put hope on it. And I'm learning. It's something you have to apply. Now is your time. If you have received today and you want to support, please support it. Support today with your seed of hope. Well, saints, have a blessed day. Know that you are loved. Keep on keeping on. I love you till life is our leg, lady says.